everybody welcome to our channel Kavi web designs today we're gonna start with our new course it's all about python programming we'll teach you from zero to a hero about the author hi i am ishank i'm a full stack ai application developer passionate about coding i specialize in html javascript and backend languages like node.js and python and databases i create dynamic user friendly ai web applications by seamlessly integrating front end and back end with a focus on generative ai chatbot design and machine learning i'll be an instructor and teach you python from start to finish so now let's jump into this course and look at our table of contents so as you can see over here here we have our table of contents the first is an introduction we'll talk about what is python what can python do and python initialization as well as visual studio code and how do we run python then we we'll go into python basics we will learn about variables data types conditions loops and functions and then the third we will learn about object oriented programming we will learn about classes and objects inheritance scope modules dates and math json regular expression pip user input and so many more then we we'll go into our fourth stage which is file handling we will learn how to open a file how to read an existing file how to write an existing file and how to delete a file then we'll move on to exceptional handling we'll learn about the try block accept block else block and finally block then we'll learn the little basics about python modules numpy pandas spicy and fast api then we'll do a full stack project in with integrating html javascript and python fast api so let's jump into our course with introduction what is python Python is a high-level interpreted programming language known for its simplicity and readability. It was created by Judo Van Rossum and first released in 1991. Python emphasizes code readability using significant indentation to define blocks of code rather than curly braces or keywords. Key features of Python: First, it is easy to learn and use. Python simple syntax makes it an excellent language for beginners. Interpreted language. Python executes code line by line, making debugging easier. Cross platform. Python runs in various platforms such as Windows, Mac, Linux and etc. Dynamic typing. You don't need to declare variable types. Python determines them at runtime. Extensive libraries. Python has a wide range of libraries and frameworks such as numpy, pandas, django and flask which make development faster and more efficient. Open source. Python is free to use and distribute even for commercial purposes. Community support. Python has vast and active community that contributes to its growing ecosystem. Now let's learn about Python's applications. Web development using frameworks like django and flask. data science and machine learning with libraries like numpy pandas and science kit learn and tensorflow automation automating repetitive tasks with python script scripting python is frequently used for writing scripts to automate tasks like file handling and network connections and etc game development using libraries like pygame so now let's learn how to download python First, we have to visit the official Python website, which is this, and then download the latest version for your operating system, Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. In Windows, run the installer and check the box that says Add Python to Path and click Install Now. In Mac OS, open the PKG file and follow the instructions. And in Linux, you can use your package manager, for example, Ubuntu, and run this command over here. And then to verify the installation, we just write this. So now let's go to Google using this link. So as you can see right here, here is Python's website where we can download it. So once we click this button, we'll get a file, and then the steps are easy to follow. So now let's go back to the PPT to learn more. To install Python and set, so now we're gonna use another tool called Visual Studio Code. It makes it easy to write code. So to install Python and set up Visual Studio Code. For Python development, follow these simple steps. First, we had to install Python. Second, we had to install Visual Studio Code. So I'll show you how to do that. So first, we have to click this link and go here. 
then we see this download button over here and once we click it there will be a file and the simple steps and there are some simple steps which are easy so once you download that we'll have this over here so this is which is your code and once you get it you can open any file you want like this so once we open this up as you can see here we have our python files so now let's go back to the ppt to learn more then if you want to actually run those python code we need to install a python extension in visual studio code and that is simple we go over here we go to the extensions tab and type in p-y-p-h-o-n so now as you can see over here here we have our extension we had to install this over here and this will install python python debugger and pylance and then so now let's go back to the ppt so we had to install another extension called code runner to make it simple and easy to run our python code so let's do that too we can over here we can search up code runner and over here there will be an install button and you have to press it so now once we have those so as you can see so as you can see this play button will show up so now we have to press this and say run python file so as you can see over here here we get our result which is hello world so now let's go back to the ppt to learn more so now let's go into our chapters and the first chapter is python getting started python quick start python is an interpreted programming language this means that as a developer you can write python dot py files in a text editor and then put those files into the python in interpreter to be executed the way to run files is like this on the command line so as you can see here's our file called hello world so now as you can see we have written print hello world and print over here is basically like the real world print so you type in hello world over here so as you can see over here here's the output of the program which is hello world so now let's ex look at this example using Visual Studio Code. So as you can see over here, here is our example, which is print hello world. And over here, print means display, so it will display hello world, which is a string. So if you run it, as you can see, it will say hello world with some other stuff. So we can even write numbers over here. So like one, two, three, and then you will run those. So as you can see, we have one, two, three over here. We can write decimal points such as 0.87. So if we run this, it will display 123.87. And we can display a Boolean value such as true. So if we do that, see, it will say true. But you may experience some error as because when installing these extensions, you may want to close Visual Studio Core and reopen it so that the extensions can refresh. So now let's go back to PPT to learn more. So now we're going to our next chapter which is Python syntax. So as you can see over here, so you may ask how do you execute Python code without Visual Studio Code? Python code can be executed by running a .py file in a terminal or directly in an IDE. So as you can see over here, here is an example called and this file is named hello.py. So as you can see over here, here we have a simple print statement saying hello world. So now to execute it, first we have to save the file named hello.py. Then we have to open terminal or command prompt. Navigate to the folder where you save the file and run this command, python hello.py. So this will run the python code and then the output will be hello world. So this is what you do if you don't have visual if you don't want to use Visual Studio Code. But Visual Studio Code makes it way more easier than writing various commands to give a simple output. So now, just like in other programming languages, Python has variables. In Python, variables don't need to be explicitly declared. You simply assign a value to a variable and Python infers the type. So as you can see over here, here we have four variables. So as you can see over here, we have written name equals John, age equals 25 and height equals 5.9 and age student is true so first over here this variable is a string this variable over here which has the value of 25 is an integer that we call and then height over here which has a decimal point 
9.5, we call it a float. And each student, we call it a boolean as because it has a keyword over here called true. And now over here, we are outputting the variables print, name, age, height, and each student. Note we are not using inverted commas as because here this is a variable, not a string. So now let's look at this example using Visual Studio Code. So as you can see over here, here's the code from the PPT. So if you run this, it will say John 25, 5.9 and true. So as you can see over here, if you put strings over here and same as over here and in the rest and now if we save this and run as you can see we we'll get those na variable names uh, because now the strings are not variables so if you revert them back and if you play as you can see we'll say john 25 9.5 and true but what happens if you write a print and a variable which we we have never declared like hi we have never declared that variable right so as you can see, Visual Studio Code is giving that high is not defined. But what happens if you still run it? As you can see, we'll get a traceback error. As you can see over here, here is pointing out the line where high is not defined. So if you define high over here and give it the value of high, and if we run it, if you save and run, as you can see, it says John 25, 5.9, true and high. There is no error over here. As because now high is declared. But you may wonder, can we declare a string just with a single quote? Yes, you can. You can use double quotes or single quotes. The result will not change. So now let's go back to the PPT to learn more. Comments. So you may ask another question such as, does Python have comments? Yes, Python has comments. Comments in Python began with the hashtag symbol and are ignored by the interpreter. They are used to explain code. So as you can see over here, here's a simple example where we have used three comments over here. First, we have written another, a comment at the start of a Python program. This is a comment. And next, we have written x equals 5. And in the same line, we have written an, another comment. And then over here, we have written another comment saying print the value of x. So now, as you can see over here, here's the exam explanation of the code. So as you can see over here, this comment over here is ignored by Python. So this will, or any of these comments over here will be ignored by Python. So that means Python doesn't care about them. It will only care about the values which are not hashed, which are not hashtag. So that is x equals 5 and print x. So now if you look at this using Visual Studio Code, as you can see over here, here, if you run this code, it will say 5. And this is the same as not having any comments. And if you run this, as you can see, we'll get the same result, 5. So, and then if we revert the changes back again, we'll still get the same result, 5. As because these comments are not are being ignored. But if we forget this comment, and we write it, we get an error. So that's why we generally use comments to write text in Python to explain the code. So now let's go back to the PPT to learn more. And next we have the most important rule, indentation. Python uses indentation to define code blocks. Unlike other languages, it doesn't use curly brackets. So if you know JavaScript, there you would know that we use curly braces. But over here, we just use spaces to define indentation. So as you can see over here, here is a simple function called say hello and then this function just prints hello so as you can see over here he is explanation the line print hello is indented by four spaces or a tab so it is part of the say hello function python will raise an error if the indentation is incorrect so now let's look at this code using this is real code so as you can see over here here we have our code where we have declared a function and then over here we're calling that function. So now if you run this, as you can see, it will say hello. But if there's no indentation, and then we run it, as you can see, we'll get an error. Indentation error. Expected, expected an indentation block after a function definition on line 3. 
So even if we have one space, Python will say it was okay. We can have as many spaces as we want. And Python will still say it is okay. So what happens if we write another line, another four spaces and write something of print? So as you can see over here, here Python is giving an error. So if we play, it will give another indentation error, unexpected indent. That means that we have way too many spaces over here for the, in this code log. So if we delete those spaces, as you can see, it will be perfectly fine. So folks, that is for today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to support us, please like, share, subscribe to our channel, Kaviya Designs. Keep on watching our videos on Source from Love. Have a nice day.